Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A big crash in West Bear County causes major traffic problems. What the Sheriff's Office is saying about the crash this morning. And the battle at the border continues following the Supreme Court's decision to keep Title 42 in place for now. How Border Patrol officials are struggling to process thousands of migrants waiting at the border. Outside with live cam, wow, noticeably warmer out there this morning. 61 degrees at last check and the humidity is back as well. It almost feels like there wants to be a little bit of fog as well. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, December 29th. Thanks for joining us. You could definitely feel it when you walk out. I was like, I don't even need my jacket today. No kidding. Yeah, it's it's a game changer out there. We knew things were going to warm up around here. Justin is in this morning with an update. And do we have any fog reported so far? Starting to get a little bit out there. Okay. It's, it's hard to believe less than a week ago we were talking about being in the teens. Now we're in the 60s and it's humid and it's going to be warm for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're going to end 2022. We look at the fog situation. And yes, we're starting to see a little bit developing in spots. Nothing that's too serious right now up around Kerrville some more visibility and as we look at the uh, bigger picture there are some spots here around South Texas where the fog is getting a little thicker Victoria and Catua namely right now but I do think that we'll see a little bit here around San Antonio possible uh, next few hours uh, cloudy today and then we may see a few storms off to the east. It's a small chance that we'll see any rain here, so I wouldn't plan for it. But just know that if you're east of town, there could be a couple of thunderstorms. As we get into tomorrow, a few light showers. Again, nothing significant, but a lot of cloud cover. The weekend, though, looks much better. We'll see clearing skies. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day looking good at this point. Right now, 61 and cloudy. Dew point is at 59. Temperature and dew point getting close together, and we have calm winds. So that's a pretty good setup for fog. Case that 12 hour forecast, small chance is for rain today. There is a 20% shot at seeing a shower, maybe a storm as uh, we had later into today. Temperatures make their way up to around 66 noontime and then this afternoon we're around 71 72 for high warm and humid. We'll take a look at the extended forecast. There is another chance of rain down the line as we head into 2023. More on that in just a bit guys. Okay, there's the microphone right there. I think we're having some microphone issues this morning, folks, so we apologize in advance. You guys want me to go ahead and go ahead? Or, okay. A major multi-vehicle crash happened last night on eastbound Highway 90 near Highway 211 in West Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that because the crash uh, of the crash, traffic was diverted at State Highway 211 and westbound at W.T. Montgomery. Injuries and what led to the crash are unknown so far. BCSO said the area was impacted for hours while deputies conducted their investigation. It's a first for the Guadalupe County. Their area of fire rescue is announcing their first shift with full-time firefighters. The Guadalupe County Fire Marshal says the new shift started at midnight. There will now be three firefighters on duty 24-7. They will handle a 36 square mile area. The fire marshal says the goal of this move is to provide more fire protection for their community. Now to the crisis at the southern border after the Supreme Court let Title 42 stay in place for now. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, migrant families remain in limbo this morning. This morning, thousands of migrants are waiting just over the border to enter America. While in the U.S., people in El Paso, Texas, are protesting the extension of Title 42, the pandemic-era policy that allows the U.S. to expel migrants back across the border without an asylum hearing. Luis Campos says many people sold their houses to take on this journey. How will you go back if you don't have a place to return to your country? The Supreme Court majority on Tuesday sided with a group of mostly Republican-led states and ordered Title 42 to remain in place pending a hearing before the justices. However, in the ruling, the court suggested that the president has the legal authority to lift the policy, but the White House insists they are deferring to the court. Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch, the only conservative to agree with the liberals on the court, wrote, court should not be in the business of perpetuating administrative edicts. We are a court of law, not policymakers of last resort. In the meantime, border states are overrun with migrants and are struggling with a lack of resources. It's estimated that 18,000 people could cross the border every day if the policy is lifted. 
Texas Governor Greg Abbott tweeting he's ordered shipping containers placed along the border to deter more illegal crossings, which has become a near humanitarian crisis in his state. I just think they can't handle the numbers and they don't have the funding from Congress. So here we are again waiting on Congress to act. The Biden administration says it will continue to enforce Title 42 into the new year, even as people continue to attempt to cross. The Supreme Court has scheduled oral arguments on Title 42 for February. In the meantime, the White House is calling on Congress to pass comprehensive immigration reform, something not done in 36 years. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. In Cambodia, a massive fire raging more than 12 hours at a hotel casino has killed at least 11 people. Thai media reports dozens of people were trapped and rescuers say calls for help were heard hours after the fire began. Social media videos show people falling from the roof after apparently being trapped. A firefighter said the massive size of the fire inside the hotel casino complex made it difficult for their water cannons to reach the blaze. The hotel casino employed about 400 workers and was popular with foreign gamblers in town just four hours from Thailand's capital, Bangkok. The Vatican says Pope Emeritus Benedict's health has worsened over the past hours and doctors are constantly monitoring his condition. Pope Francis has appealed to the faithful to pray for his very ill predecessor until the end. A Vatican spokesperson said Francis went to visit the 95-year-old Benedict in a monastery on Vatican grounds where he has lived since retiring back in February of 2013. The spokesperson said Benedict's situation at the moment remains under control. Benedict was the first pontiff to resign in 600 years. Benjamin Netanyahu's stunning political comeback in Israel culminates today. That's when he'll be formally sworn in as prime minister for a record sixth time. Before that happens, parliament will vote on his new cabinet. Analysts expect it to be the most conservative government in Israeli history. Right now, 437, 61 degrees. If the air coming out of your car vent smells a little weird, we're going to show you an easy way to fix that. Okay, that happens from time <laughs> to time. Lots going on in sports tonight, including the uh, Alamo Bowl between Texas and Washington. Find out how both teams say they are prepared to win it. Let's look out there with Trans Guide, looking over at Loop 1604 at Military. Very quiet this morning. Doesn't appear to be any problems. We'll be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour. And outside with live cam, if you've been sick of the chilly weather around here today, it's going to be a good day. We're already at 61 degrees. Rather, it's only cooled off to about 61 degrees. All right, welcome back. 440, here's the Valero Alamo Bowl trophy alongside the football helmets for UT and the University of Washington. That's a sweet trophy and two beautiful lids. Tonight, the Longhorns and Huskies will battle it out at the Alamo Dome in what many expect to be a high-scoring contest. The over-under is 67.5 points. Both head coaches say their teams are ready to go. Kickoff set for 8 o'clock tonight at the Alamo Dome. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys are now in Nashville to play the Tennessee Titans in an odd game for the AFC South squad tonight. This contest does not affect the Titans playoff hopes, which will be decided by the outcome of their week 18 game against the Jaguars. The winner will claim the AFC South and advance to the playoffs. At 11 and 4, the Cowboys have secured a playoff berth and they still have a shot at winning the NFC East should the first place Eagles falter. Tennessee has ruled out seven players, including quarterback Ryan Tannehill and running back Derrick Henry is doubtful with a hip injury. So does all that make it tough for Dak to prep for this game? Honestly, I don't ever really care what they're doing on the other side. Um, as I just said, it's about us just building momentum, grabbing confidence with each game that we do, um, and just moving forward, as I said, as we play these last two out and head over into the postseason. Um, yeah, if they want to roll us the ball a couple of times and let us go from there, I'm, <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, so we'll take it however they want to do it. Kickoff against the Titans is tonight at 7.15. Spurs third-year shooting guard Devin Vassell led the team with 20 points in their last game against the Thunder. Despite the loss, that's his second straight 20-point game in his 16th this season. Win or lose, the Spurs know they can count on him. Playing in a sub-500 season, Vassell has definitely been a bright spot for our Spurs. He's second on the team, averaging 19.6 points per game. His progression has been excellent, but it isn't by mistake. Like, he really is a gym rat, and... Uh, done a good job of buying in on this whole development um, program that the Spurs are trying to be aggressive with. 
Spurs will next play the Knicks tonight at 7. New York comes to town after losing in Dallas in overtime. And time now, 442 and 61 degrees for now. While your car is trying to heat back up from all our freezing weather, you may have noticed a funky smell in there. Up next, what it is and what to do about it. Next, uh, look, first look at an amazing rescue story of two moms who helped track down a kidnapped baby boy and the woman who took him. And welcome back. It's 445. Two moms are being held as heroes after they helped track down a kidnapped baby and the woman who took him. ABC's Matt Rivers has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, one of the moms who helped bring a missing Ohio baby home speaking out. I knew in my heart that it was her. Um, I knew for a fact. Cheyenne Belmar saw the mugshot of the wanted suspect and recognized her. I seen the mugshot and I'm, I'm like, this person looked familiar, but I'm not knowing from where. The pair meeting at an Indiana gas station hours earlier and exchanging information. She finally came outside. She told us to pull out in front of the house. We pull out in front of the house. She gets in the car. The next day, Belmar and her cousin picking the woman up in their car to help bring her to justice. Me calling her back was to make sure that she was still in Indianapolis and that I could figure out a way to get her into custody. And coming up at 7 a.m., how they say they led police officers to the kidnapping suspect. I didn't think that I would be a part of anything like this ever in my life. With your GMA First Look, I'm Matt Rivers. ABC News, New York. Well, something stinks when you get in your car, especially when the AC or heater's on. Listen up. That musty, sweaty sock smell is not that tricky to get rid of. 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris explains the problem and how to clear the air. Does the air coming out of your car vent smell a little funky? Unless you left your teen's sweaty sports gear in the car, there's another likely culprit. What you're probably smelling is condensation from the event inside your heating and cooling system. Basically, water collects in that area, and if it sits for long enough, it creates that musty smell. Most of the water is supposed to exit your car through the evaporator drain under your car. You've probably seen a small puddle of water. But sometimes that water collects in the evaporator, and if it sits there a while, bacteria and mold form and stink. Here's the good news. This should be an easy DIY fix. First, turn the fan to the low setting and open the windows. Get a disinfectant or an AC disinfectant from the auto parts store and sprayed into the climate system's air intake, also called the plenum. The plenum can be found at the base of your where the wipers are located. This is where the air comes from that goes into your heating and cooling system. With the engine on and interior fan running, spray cleaner on both sides of the intake vent and the fan will pull it into the system where it will kill the bacteria and the smell. If you have a cabin filter, remove that before you spray. It may be a good that too. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the roads out there. Loop 1604 at Military Drive. Pretty quiet so far. It's kind of been quiet in the morning uh, since a lot of the kiddos are not back at school yet. There was a bad accident, 1604 and Braun, but we think that one has now cleared or will clear very, very soon. Justin's in for Mike. How are you, sir? Morning. Doing well. Good. Doing well. Yeah. Coming off of vacation, so yes. I feel very fresh. Good. Good yeah, to see but you left it was you know 16 degrees now i come back and it's uh 60. 61. that's <laughs> that's how we do things yeah. here in south texas uh, a lot of humidity and starting to see some fog in spots let's go outside for you and uh, looking at uh, uh, i-10 there again traffic's light and uh, we're seeing just some low hanging clouds here in san antonio right now no fog just yet temperature 61 degrees dew point is at 59 calm winds this is a good setup for fog with temperatures and dew points getting as close as they are and then light winds. We'll see what happens here in town. There's a pretty good spread when it comes to the temperatures. Cooler numbers out west, warmer as you work east, and this all has to do with humidity. So you're 52 in Del Rio right now, 55 in Uvalde. Not cold, but cooler. And then you've got 60s as you work east with the uh, thicker humidity streaming in now. 60 in Holota, 60 Boulevardi, 59 Bernie Stage. Curvo right now at 58. And as we look at the dew points, uh, dew points are in the upper 50s, close to 60s. So this is this is pretty muggy. That puts us in the muggy category. And these dew points may grow even a little bit more throughout the day. Uh, as you look at the big picture here, you can see the setup. So the flow coming off the Gulf of Mexico and that moisture is quickly spreading north, bringing about those changes after that big time cold snap. So it is going to feel very different next few days. 
And as we look at the uh, severe weather risk today with that humidity streaming north, we've got a storm system coming in from the west. There is a risk for a few strong storms, but it's going to be mainly east of our area. So we're talking Bryan College Station, Houston, Tyler up to Shreveport. I can't rule out a strong storm across our far eastern counties today, but I think the threat is is low. And as we look at the forecast here, uh, just a 10% chance of rain this morning with some drizzle by the afternoon. We are starting to see a few showers, maybe a storm popping up, but notice that's generally east of San Antonio. So by 8 p.m. still seeing a little bit of activity out there and then uh, that all sweeps north and east. As we get into tomorrow, a few more light showers will try to work in as our storm system moves to our north. Uh, the rain chances again are pretty small and anything we see tomorrow is going to be uh, very much on the light side, but we can't rule it out uh, through the evening hours and then that clears out. Good news here. Looks like by uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, we're going to be looking at some pretty good weather. So 61 degrees at 6 o'clock, 67 a.m. We're up to 66 by noontime and high temperature today right around 72 or so with that 20% chance of a shower or storm. Dew point trends. Well, it's going to be fairly humid today. Dew points drop off, build again by Sunday, and then fall off again as we get some weak fronts coming through here. Uh, so it is going to be somewhat sticky uh, going forward. And as we look at the future cast here, this is the first system that brings us a little bit of a rain chance today. That moves away. Saturday and Sunday look great, as I said, New Year's, New, Year, uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And then as we get into next week, this is that next storm system that comes in on Monday that maybe gives us a little better chance of rain. And it'll all depend on timing here, but that's what we have to look forward to. New Year's forecast, 76 Saturday, 78 Sunday. Looks good, more humidity on Sunday, but no big deal. So as we ring in the new year, all is well. 70 Friday, we showed you the weekend forecast, 79 Monday, where we've added in that rain chance, 79. And then uh, some 70s, it's, it's all 70s in fact throughout the seven day forecast. So it all looks good. I always worry about this time of year and when we get these warming trends, fakes out mother nature as far as, oh, oh spring's gonna begin, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's gonna take a while. My plants are dead. about as dead as they can dead, be. Dead. Yeah, the cold temperatures Aww. did a number on them, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My green grass is now brown. Yep. All right, Justin, thank you very much. 452, 61 degrees. And actors talk about the final episode of a popular Hulu show, plus how Avatar The Way of Water is making more waves at the box office. Let's take a look at your lottery. 081, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 2806, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 5, 23, 26, 30, 35. Lotto, Texas, 8, 13, 16, 23, 27, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 26, 32, 38, 45, 56, Powerball 1, Power Play 2. Good luck. Oh, wait, the million. 246 million for Powerball. Good luck. Welcome back. 5 till 5, a season finale for a favorite show on Hulu. Plus, Bill Cosby might go on tour again. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Money doesn't buy you happiness. Oh, Toby, of course it does. What, are you crazy? Will Fleischman be saved from his or her trouble? The season finale of Fleischman is in Trouble debuts today. Jesse Eisenberg and Claire Danes playing a divorcing couple who each have their own view of what went wrong. Most of the series, Danes' character has been getting the blame, but last week the perspective shifted. And Danes tells me that's the genius of the show and the book it was based on. And then you suddenly feel complicit. Right. Like, oh, I was I, why did I not challenge this earlier? Why? You know, I am part of the system, you know, the mm -hmm. the the um, the patriarchy. You know what I mean? So, no, it's it's um, it's it's really effective and it's very unnerving. The final episode of Fleischman is in trouble is out today on Hulu. Treat them as our brothers and sisters. The Avatar sequel, The Way of Water, now just one of three movies to earn a billion dollars in 2022. And it was the fastest film to get there. It took just 14 days. The other two, Top Gun Maverick and Jurassic World Dominion. Bill Cosby might go on tour in 2023 in a new interview Wednesday with Ohio radio station WWGH. He said he'd like to return to storytelling next year. Cosby was not asked about the new lawsuit in which five women accuse him of rape and sexual assault. He's previously denied all assault allegations. And a big birthday for TV legend Ted Danson. The Cheers and Good Place star is 75 today, while Andor's Diego Luna is 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
Time now, 457 and 61 degrees for now. The holiday meltdown at Southwest Airlines continues with the Dallas Space Company's doing this morning to get passengers and their luggage back home. Plus, Texas is facing a huge shortage of EMS workers. How the Texas legislator is hoping to change that and how a local ambulance service provider is hoping to rebuild their workforce. I briefly mentioned an accident at 1604 in Braun on the northwest side. We understand it is still active. We'll get an update coming up at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. As we still feel the ripple effect from winter storms, travelers at airports remain stranded. How the situation is still impacting passengers here in San Antonio. And taking a look out there with live cam. Surprise, it's 61 degrees, not the cold mornings we've been having. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, December 29th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, for a lot of people, this is a welcome change. It's been a little cold, especially last Friday. You may walk out the door with a jacket on today and then immediately take it off. Yeah. Justin? That is exactly the case. As temperatures are pretty warm this morning. And you just saw there the, 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 the tease about Southwest Airlines. I'm curious to see how quickly that gets resolved. Most of the weather's moved out, but they still have some issues. So we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, I want to show you the pollen count real quick, too. Uh, this was yesterday's numbers. Molds are at 290. Mountain Cedar is at 40. All is low. Thankfully, Mountain Cedar has been behaving itself. We'll see how things uh, also play out with Mountain Cedar as we get into uh, next year. But I'll tell you this. We don't have any big northerly wind events in the forecast, so that would make you think that Mountain Cedar should stay on the low end. I want to show you the 24 hour dew point change. This is important. This is why we're seeing the warmer temperatures. Moisture is surged in here at a pretty good rate. So dew points are up some 25 degrees, 28 degrees in Pleasanton. And when you get dew point surges like that, it typically means you'll get some fog. It'll be uh, fairly sticky outside. You'll get cloud cover and maybe even a few showers. There is a chance for that in the forecast today. So uh, by 7 a.m., 60 degrees, just a small chance of fog and drizzle. 65 at 11 o'clock, 66 noontime, still small chances of rain. And I think it probably stays cloudy most of the day. A few peaks of sun are possible, but it don't look for much. 72 degrees, your high temperature. There's a 20% chance of a shower or even a thunderstorm, but that's generally going to be east of San Antonio. We talk more about that forecast and look ahead to New Year's Eve and New Year's Day here in just a second. But let's get over to Steven now. We've had some issues this morning. Uh, yeah, Justin, unfortunately, it's not been a great start to this Thursday morning as we get the commute rolling. Let's get a quick look around town. You can see 281 at Jones Maltzberger really isn't a problem spot at this hour. Even US 90 at Couples, one of those busy spots has been pretty quiet over the last few days, but the real trouble is going to lie over on the northwest side near 1604 at Braun, where unfortunately we are learning of a deadly crash that occurred in the early hours of this morning. We are going to hopefully have more on that story a little bit later and hopefully a live report from Camelia Wattis a little later on. But uh, we also had another crash that was reported right here along I-10 westbound near Medical Drive. We'll make sure to get that crash icon on the map for you so you know where to look out for. But again, if you're driving west on I-10, just be on the lookout for those first responders. Thankfully, the morning really hasn't had a whole lot of issues these last few days. And that could be because people are still maybe staying at home uh, this early in the morning. But if you, for whatever reason, have to head out the door, maybe travel this early into the Alamo City, let's check out those travel times because it's still pleasant on I-37 northbound with 28 minutes from Pleasant. 30 minutes usual drive time on US 90 heading in from Castroville in this eastbound lanes. And right now that arrival from Lytle, 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. But let's get you back here to Transguide. We're going to be keeping a close eye on these cameras for you and give you the updates as you need them throughout the morning and hopefully have an update over in that crash on the northwest side a little bit later on. Mark Steph. Thank you, Stephen. District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry has now been arrested on DWI charges for a hit and run case. Perry is suspected of crashing his Jeep Wrangler head on into a Honda Civic before driving away from the scene. That incident landed Perry out of the city council chambers and into San Antonio police handcuffs. At first time, DWI charge is considered a class B misdemeanor, which carries a maximum fine of $3,000 along with a six month jail sentence. Now, Perry has since been released on bond. The crash happened back on November 6th. San Antonio police released the body cam footage four days later. On November 14th, City Council held a special meeting where they issued a vote of no confidence for Perry. That is the same day Perry took a temporary leave of absence. Mike Gallagher was announced as his replacement on December 1st. And Kasett has reached out to Perry for comment. He has not responded.
After two weeks, San Antonio police have now arrested a suspect that accused in a deadly crash where two teenagers died. 23-year-old Lee Roy Morales is charged with failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. The crash happened back December 16th in the 2800 block of Rigsby Avenue. San Antonio police say the teens were walking on the crosswalk when they were hit by a vehicle before taking off. The victims have been identified as 15-year-old Jordan Canedo and 17-year-old James Solis. The family of Poti police officer Jeffrey Richardson has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against a suspect drunk driver and the bar that served her. So back in June, Richardson was working a contract job near the Domain Shopping Center in Austin. Officials say Lindsay Smith was driving the car that hit and killed him. The lawsuit claims she drove through several large orange barrel traffic barricades and ultimately struck the officer Richardson. The Richardson family attorney Stephen Stewart says Smith chose to drink and drive, putting those on the road in danger. He also claims the bar she was at, Jack and Ginger's, continued to serve her even though she was overly drunk. The family is seeking over a million dollars in damages. Troubles continue for travelers at San Antonio International Airport this morning. As far as cancellations today, 31 departures are listed as canceled, along with 22 arrivals. Meanwhile, following the major winter storm, the death toll has risen to at least 38. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. The deep freeze across western New York breaking as temperatures rise. In Buffalo, the driving ban has lifted, freeing drivers to dig out and try restarting their cars once buried beneath more than four feet of snow. I really can't use words to explain how bad it was. Though power is back online for many, the National Guard is making door-to-door -door wellness checks after widespread outages. Because we are fearful that there are individuals who may have perished. The Erie County executive going on to call Buffalo's response to the monumental storm embarrassing. Storm after storm after storm after storm. The city, unfortunately, is the last one to be opened. Buffalo's mayor responding. People have been working around the clock since the beginning of this storm. Nationwide, the storm now blamed for at least 60 deaths, with more than 30 counted from the Buffalo area. Among those victims, 52-year-old Monique Alexander, her daughter confirming to ABC News a man found her mother's body on a street and contacted her family on Facebook. I lose two days of holiday pay plus three days of regular pay because I was supposed to be back Sunday. Thousands of Southwest Airlines passengers are still stranded days after the storm. The discount carrier canceling more than 13,000 flights this week with more cancellations today. We're focused on safely getting all of the pieces back into position uh, to end this rolling struggle. And now Buffalo is prepping for another potential weather event, flooding due to rising temperatures, melting snow and rain forecast. The governor says thousands of sandbags and hundreds of pumps and generators are ready if needed. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 508, 61 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you about a new feature on the Waze driving app that could make your commute a little safer. Next, the EMT shortage hitting dangerously low levels, but a new hiring program needs to combat that. But how will it help future EMTs get their certificate at no cost? And let's look out there with live cam. Good news if you got tired of that cold weather. Step outside now. You're at 61 degrees. We'll be right back. 5-11, the Texas legislature is hoping to combat an EMS shortage by setting aside millions of dollars for education and retention. Through Senate Bill 8, $21.7 million has been set aside. And with this funding, the Texas Department of State Health Services created the EMS Education Scholarship Fund. It will completely cover the cost of people getting their certification for EMT, advanced or EMT or paramedic. There's also priority given to people working in rural counties and underserved areas of our state. A recruiter with Arcadian Ambulance hopes this will help build back their workforce. Really putting it to use to grow uh, individuals internally um, to make sure that when you call 911, someone's going to show up at your door. Applications are open to anyone 18 years and up with a high school diploma or GED. So to sign up with the program at Acadian Ambulance, we have the listed information on kset.com. You can also sign up on becomeamedic.com. The next class with Acadian starts on February 22nd. It's now 512, still 61 degrees. And Amazon nearly has its hands in everything from shopping to your home. So why not sports? We're going to tell you about its new way of highlighting your favorite teams. 
Plus how and where hackers were able to access data on thousands of patients in an attempted ransomware attack. Meet Febreze's Miracle Spray, Febreze Fabric Refresher. I literally use this every day to make my house smell amazing. After I make the bed, after I catch my dog on the couch, so I can wear my jacket or jeans one more time before I wash them again. It even makes shoes smell fresh. It doesn't cover up odors with scent, but actually helps eliminate them. Over 1,000 uses. Febreze Fabric Refresher. Second date. Wish me luck, buddy. Mouth to mission control. We have a denture problem. Over. Roger that. With Polydent Cleanser and Polygrip Adhesive, we're fresh and secure for any close encounter. If your mouth could talk, it would ask for Polydent and Polygrip. Okay, everyone. Our mission is complete balanced nutrition. Together, we support immune function, supply fuel for immune cells, and sustain tissue health. Ensure with 25 vitamins and minerals and ensure complete with 30 grams of protein. 516, the popular navigation app Waze is working on a new feature that could make driving safer. ABC's Morgan Norwood has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon is possibly getting deeper into sports casting. Amazon is reportedly working on a new standalone app for streaming sports content. That includes Amazon Prime's Thursday night NFL package. It's unclear when the app may be released, if it's released at all. A Louisiana healthcare system says it was the victim of a ransomware attack. Lake Charles Memorial Health says patient names, social security numbers, payment information, and other data was compromised in October as many as 270,000 people could be vulnerable. And the Waze Navigation app is testing a new alert that notifies drivers about roads with a history of crashes. The app highlights the high-risk road in red on the map. The feature is expected to be released to the general public soon, and drivers will have the option to turn it off. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 517, and we're still yes. waiting for more information on what's happening out there far northwest side. But uh, we do have a shot from Transguide, and this is the shot that we were hoping to get for you guys a little bit earlier. Uh, I spoke to them on the phone, and what we had, what they had noticed is that there was flashing lights somewhere out of the distance. You can actually make that out uh, on your TV screen there. You can see them almost between the trees. Uh, unfortunately, this deadly crash uh, that we are hearing more information about, or working to get more information about, is located off of 1604, so unfortunately there are no cameras directly in that area, but we will hear from our Camilia Wattis at some point in the show and we'll give you the information as it becomes available. But you can see that obviously still pretty active out there. Haven't heard of any road closures yet, but just be on the lookout because where we have that reported is there at Braun Road, uh, just near 1604 over on the northwest side. No buildup of traffic, at least at this point. But again, hopefully we'll get a live look a little bit later on. We have to take a drive over here to US 90 westbound at Zaza Mora. You can also see another crash reported. Uh, uh, but this is in the westbound lane, so we're not seeing any buildup here, uh, at least just yet. But we'll keep a close eye on that, and I'll get our friends at Transcout on the phone to find out if we can get an actual shot of the conditions out there. But other than that, it's uh, been pretty quiet. We do have two incidents that we are keeping a close eye on throughout the morning, but the good thing is, uh, for the most part, it is a very quiet start to the morning around town. But this is one of those incidents that we'll have to track closely throughout the morning, and we'll let you know how that impacts the commute. Justin? Stephen, thank you. We want to look back at 2022 real quick. Uh, what were the extremes that we saw this year? Well, the coldest was just a few days ago. We got down to 16 on December 23rd, and that is uh, the coldest temperature, uh, not to mention we had wind chill values uh, down close to zero. The hottest day we had was July 11th. We got up to 107, so we had about a 91 degree temperature difference between our hottest day and our coldest day. We had a similar difference last year, so uh, some pretty extreme temperatures there. And now we're starting to kind of even out a little bit. I should also mention that we will finish the year as the second driest on record. Right now we're at 11.51. Yes, we could pick up a little bit of rain today and tomorrow, but I don't think we pick up much. So we uh, will stay right there in the second spot. We average 32.19, just to give you some perspective. So we are way below average. Not as dry as 1917, though. As we go outside for you, right now, cloudy skies and 61 at the airport, 63 stints and 61 at Kelly and 63 at Randolph. Temperatures are going to be cooler as you go out west. That's where we have less humidity this morning. 15 Del Rio, 55 Uvalde. The more humidity uh, you get, the warmer those temperatures are. We're seeing that across the eastern half of the viewing area. 66 in Gonzales, 66 in New Braunfels. 
and around Bear County, low 60s at this hour. I don't anticipate us dropping really any more as dew points are on the rise. We've got dew points now close to 60, so that puts us in the muggy territory, and that doesn't change much today. That moisture streaming north across the eastern half of the state, even into parts of of Arkansas and Oklahoma and Missouri as that is getting pulled north out ahead of a storm system. There is a risk for a few stronger storms today in this area shaded in pink, and it is our far eastern uh, parts of our viewing area, Howitzville, LaGrange, where we could see maybe a stronger storm. I really don't anticipate much. And really any rain today, I think, is going to be along Highway 281 and points east. So our rain chances are generally pretty low. Just a 10% chance this morning for some fog and drizzle by 3 o'clock. We'll bring it up to a 20% chance, but it'll be a spotty shower again uh, east of San Antonio, really. And that's the case around 8 o'clock. You see it's really northeast of town. And then you may get some bigger storms that race northeastwards. Uh, as we get into tomorrow, a few very light showers in the morning, maybe one or two showers in the afternoon. Still lots of clouds. We're not going to see much sun next couple days until we get into Saturday and Sunday. And that's when the sun will come back out. So looking good for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Uh, just a 20% chance of rain tomorrow. KSAT 12 hour forecast 61 at 8 o'clock. We're up to 66 noontime, 68, 1 o'clock, and we're up to 72 for a high today. 20% chance of rain and cloudy skies. Uh, New Year's Eve forecast 76 on Saturday, 52 New Year's morning, and then up to 78 as we officially go into 2023. I will tell you though, there will be more humidity on Sunday, kind of like today. And as we look at the extended forecast and put it all together here, uh, 72 today, 70 tomorrow, 76 Saturday. We will get some cooler mornings Saturday morning and Sunday morning. And then as humidity returns, warmer to start Monday, 79. We do have a 20% chance of rain on Monday as another storm system comes through. And that cools us down a little bit Tuesday and Wednesday. But all in all, pretty nice weather as we wind down this year and go into next year. I like the wild change. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. That the cold was a little too cold for me. Yes. Yeah. We're aware. Yeah. <laughs> Have I, I mentioned that? You had. Yeah. It's okay. Sorry. We, we were going to do a group hug, but Justin said a firm no. 522, 61 degrees. <laughs> and up next, Avatar: The Way of Water finally rakes in one billion dollars. Plus, a look at Ariana Grande's, Grande's gifts for Manchester kids. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three numbers: zero, eight, one, Fireball two, Daily four, two, eight. 06 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 5, 23, 26, 30, 35. Lotto Texas 8, 13, 16, 23, 27, 52. And your Powerball numbers 26, 32, 38, 45, 56. Powerball 1, Power Play 2. 525, when you made the highest grossing movie in history, the sequel has an awfully high bar to clear. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Avatar The Way of Water has surpassed $1 billion in worldwide ticket sales. It's the fastest movie this year to reach the milestone and one of only a handful of films ever to top a billion in two weeks or less. Ariana Grande is continuing her close ties with Manchester, England. Five years ago, 22 people were killed in a terrorist attack after one of her shows there. Grandy returned weeks later to hold a benefit concert for the victims, and she's repeatedly sent Christmas gifts to Royal Manchester Children's Hospital Charity. The charity says this year's gifts from the singer went to babies, children, and teenagers at four area hospitals. I always want to be part of something bigger. Yes. Babylon is big. Damien Chazelle's epic about early Hollywood runs three hours and nine minutes. But it turns out there's a shorter version, sort of. Chazelle says he prepared for production by shooting a two-hour version of the movie with just two actors in his backyard on his iPhone. Trying to keep it concise in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, 61 degrees. Winter storms continue to be a big problem for a lot of people across the country. We're going to get an update from some of the passengers still stuck at San Antonio International. Starbucks rewarding its rewards customers with a big rule change. Why it'll soon cost you more to get those beloved free drinks. Plus, find out how Texas-based Dr. Pepper is reigning in the soda business right now while all the other competitors are falling flat. And ahead on GMSA at 6, it can be tricky to pick up the right New Year's resolution. We'll hear from a licensed psychologist on how you can make and follow through on those New Year's goals.
Welcome back. A strong storm system is causing problems in several states. How that's adding to the problems at airports across the United States. That's coming up right here on GMSA. Morning, everybody. It's Thursday. It is December 29th. Thanks for joining us. We have a big accident to talk about a little later, so we'll check with you yep. in a bit. But first, the change in the weather. Warm and humid, and we want to welcome all those people coming in for Seattle for the Alamo Bowl today and Austin and around Texas coming to San Antonio. <laughs> uh, it could be a, a sort of a shock to the system for folks coming in from the Pacific Northwest. Yes, we had some cold weather, but now things are humid and warm, and that's leading to some fog as well. We don't see much of that here around San Antonio right now, but there is some fog starting to show up around Kerrville, two and a half mile visibility there. As you go out west, there are some spots uh, maybe around Rock Springs where the fog is really starting to thicken up some. Carrizo Springs down to Catula. So it's going to be spotty and patchy, but uh, we may see some here in San Antonio uh, throughout the morning. A lot of clouds today. There could be a couple of storms generally east of San Antonio. I would not expect much here, but if you're east of town, there is the opportunity for a pop up shower or storm. Few very light showers on Friday. Again, nothing much to get excited about. But if you have plans for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, looking good. Temperatures are actually going to be quite comfortable over the weekend. 61 degrees right now, 59 the dew point. East Southeast Julie winds very, very light. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast today, 62 at 9 a.m., 66 noontime. We'll keep it cloudy most of the day. Yes, there could be a peak of sun here and there, but not much. 72 with a 20% chance of rain this afternoon. We'll keep an eye on the radar, but I, again, wouldn't anticipate too much in rain department as we finish out 2022. Let's go over to Stephen now for what has been a fairly busy morning on the roads. Uh, surprisingly, Justin, the last few mornings have been uh, pretty quiet, but unfortunately we are having a few more issues or we are experiencing a few more issues out there on the roadways. Let's first start here. US 90 at Couples. This is that crash I mentioned earlier on the map a few moments ago. Uh, it does look like we do have one vehicle at least involved at this time, and you can see they have their hazard lights on, so you have to make sure you watch out. This is one of those busy spots where people travel in both the east and westbound lanes of US 90, but that crash is reported right there along the westbound lanes as you approach Zazamora. So be on the lookout there. But the big issue that we really are tracking right now is going to be this deadly crash off of Braun Road near Loop 1604. And that's actually now where we have Camilia Juarez, who is live there now. Camilia, it does look like the scene may have cleared. What's the case right now? Stephen, that's right. The scene has cleared up. Just a couple minutes ago, fire crews and police took um, took the vehicle away, and Braun has just now opened up. But I do want to give you a look uh, at how it looked earlier this morning. San Antonio police got the call around 2 this morning, and when police arrived, they found two men who died from this crash. San Antonio police say the car was heading down Braun from 1604 when it crashed into a tree. Extra fire crews were brought out to cut the car car open and see how many people were inside. So far, we know it was just those two men. It's unclear their age. The medical examiner's office will have to identify them. And police believe speed may have been involved in this crash, but the investigation continues. And like I said, Braun is now open both directions, um, and that's how things are going. Reporting live from the northwest side, Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. All right, thank you, Camelia. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is in the hospital after she was shot in the head overnight. Officers made the discovery just after 2 this morning near the intersection of East Commerce and Honey Boulevard. Police say the woman was driving along East Commerce and ran into a Texas lawman security vehicle. When the security guard got out to check on the woman, she had been shot in the head. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Right now, police don't know who shot the woman. It's becoming more and more frustrating for Southwest Airline passengers here in San Antonio. The airline continues to cancel or delay flights at San Antonio International. Some passengers have spent hours waiting on luggage to arrive. Others told us their family members were stranded at connecting airports all across the country. Other passengers had to make unexpected road trips. They had told us that the flight was canceled. So we were left with no recourse other than to try the next day and we decided just to drive up. So we drove up, we drove up 17 hours. My sister and her husband, their kiddos, their flight got canceled this morning for their 9.30 a.m. flight. Ours was fine. Uh, my dad kept trying to get them put on our flight, but they couldn't, and it turned out to be 40 empty seats on our flight. When we landed uh, just 10 minutes late, we're actually really happy. Like, that's the least of our worries. Well, Southwest is making some progress, getting things back on track. They do say passage was flight scheduled before Monday. The second make flight changes at no cost 
on the Southwest website or app. No calling or standing line required. All that information is listed on our website at ksat.com. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people are waking up without power today. A strong source system is hammering several western states, bringing damaging winds and excessive rain and snow and knocking out power. As CNN's Mike Valerio reports, meteorologists say more waves of snow and rain are on the way. A devastating winter storm outbreak now stretching across the west. As the east coast digs out from last week's deadly Arctic blast, several western states now dealing with severe weather of their own. Very scary, very dangerous. A strong storm system bringing hurricane force winds, heavy rain and snow to several states, including California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado and New Mexico. And more waves of precipitation are on the way, with meteorologists warning it could further strengthen the ongoing holiday travel mess. As of Wednesday night, more than 40,000 customers in the region were without power, according to poweroutage.us. That figure is down from the height of 150,000 without power. We're using a flashlight, um, headlamps. headlamps. Uh, we have a candle, but we haven't brought it out yet. Meteorologists say at least three additional rounds of severe weather are lining up over the Pacific and are on a path towards the region through New Year's Day. That includes a system that could take aim at California and bring excessive rain, which could lead to mudslides in drought-stricken areas across the state. In Northern California, the slush is a welcome sight, as some hope enough snow could help the state out of its historic drought. We need either like one absolutely enormous kind of record-breaking uh, snow season. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. The House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol insurrection is withdrawing its subpoena of former President Donald Trump. The committee's chairman says the committee can no longer pursue the information covered by the subpoena because the investigation is ending. The former president was subpoenaed back in October for documents and testimony. He never complied. Instead, Trump sued the committee to block the subpoena. As the committee concludes its work, it's already referred Trump to the Justice Department for potential criminal prosecution on four separate charges. The island of Taiwan could soon be able to beef up its arms supply. That's thanks to a potential $180 million arms sale just approved by the Biden administration. Washington has long provided arms to the island under the terms of the Taiwan Relations Act. There is bipartisan support for supplying Taiwan with weapons. However, the move is likely to provoke anger from Beijing, which views Taiwan as part of China. New moves by the United States, Japan and other countries to mandate COVID tests for passengers arriving from China reflects global concerns that new variants could emerge in its ongoing explosive outbreak. So far, there have been no reports of new variants to date, but given the country's track record, the main concern is that China may not be sharing data on signs of evolving strains that could spark fresh outbreaks around the world. Starting January 5th, anyone traveling from China to the U.S. will be required to show proof of a negative PCR or antigen test taken within two days of departure. Time now, 538 and 61 degrees for now. Are you a loyal Starbucks customer? Several people in this studio are. Too bad <laughs> because they're changing the rules on you. Boo. Find out why they're changing their rewards program and why it will cost you and Stephen more stuff. Ah, terrible news. A lot of people have been stuck at the airport or in unfamiliar cities over the past few days. Up next, some things that can save you time and money as you try to get rebooked on a flight. Outside with live cam, can we ditch the coats today? Yeah, it's possible. 61's a little cool for some of you, but uh, a big, huge change by about 30 or 40 degrees compared to what we saw right around Christmas time. New Year's forecast is coming up with meteorologist Justin Horn. 541, it has been an incredibly frustrating few days for those trying to get back home from the holidays. Tens of thousands of flights have been canceled. CNN's Chris Wynn explains what you can do if you get stranded at the airport. Thousands of travelers stuck in snaking lines or on hold for hours as a travel meltdown gets worse just days to go before the New Year celebrations. Whenever I can get out of here, that's what I'll, you know, I'll go. And as desperate scenes unfold at airports nationwide and more cancellations expected this week, what can you do? Here are five tips if your flight is delayed or canceled. Number one, don't get stuck waiting on Southwest. Take matters into your own hands and book a flight with another airline. Phone calls were busy. You couldn't get a hold of anybody. It's awful. 
Number two, try an international customer service line. A spokesperson for Scott's Cheap Flights says wait times for those lines are drastically shorter than the domestic ones. Those agents will be able to help you just the same. They'll be able to get you rebooked. Number three, remember your rights. You're entitled to get rebooked on a flight for no additional cost, even if it's a few days later. Number four, check your credit card's travel protection. Some credit cards issue travel protection for canceled or significantly delayed flights. Get your credit card out, see what, what they cover, and a hotel reimbursement might be part of that. Number five, keep your receipts for any flights you rebooked, rental cars, hotels, and meals. Mm -hmm. South Southwest promised all customers, even those who made alternate arrangements on their own, would be, quote, taken care of. Take care of yourself. Do what you need to do for your family. Keep your receipts uh, and reach out to us at Southwest.com. For Consumer Watch, I'm Chris Wynn. And good luck out there as you travel maybe through New Year's. 543, 61 degrees. Coming up next, a special pet wants to start off the new year with a new home. We're going to check in with the San Antonio Humane Society. And checking TransSky, there's I-35 at I-37. Looking pretty good out there. We'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos. Call it a U-turn. Check back in with him. I do see some flashing lights. 10 at Vance Jackson. Well, here is a little boy with the most gorgeous, mm -hmm. gorgeous green eyes. Kim's here from the so, San Antonio Humane Society. Who's this little boy? This little boy is Riddle. Uh, Riddle is a two-month-old, mixed, sweet little kitten. Um, definitely aware, awake this morning. Yeah, those eyes are as big as they saucers. Are. Hi, little guy. So came into us um, with a bunch of her little brothers, his brothers and sisters. So yeah, they're available for adoption. Okay, and as Come we on. approach New Year's, we want to make sure with a lot of people set off fireworks and everything yes. like that. And watch it with your your pets and make sure you know yes. put them in a, a room, maybe with a radio or TV yes, going or something like that. Yes, keep them safe. So, yeah, um, and especially with the colder weather too, you want to make sure that they're inside or they have a place to go that they're not outside yeah, um, especially as well. not in the in the wind no, as well no yeah keep them safe inside so okay. yeah and hours as we go in toward new hours year's? are this um, we are 12 to 7 we're closed new year's eve and new year's day okay. but come out and see us and see our sweet friends um, they would love love to find a home and there'll be so. plenty more up for adoption there in the new be, year yes. so don't forget to check out this little hello little riddle i Aww. love the little black looks like he got in paint right there on his <laughs> nose uh 48 <laughs> Road and 226 is the number. Thank you, dear. Happy Thank New you. Year. Happy New Year. In your morning consumer headlines, the soda market continues to go flat as Americans cut back on bubbly beverages, but one brand has continued to grow. It may be just what the doctor ordered. Dr. Pepper, that is, for a century. Texas-based Dr. Pepper has marketed itself as the odd one out, a quirky alternative to mainstream brands like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Today, Keurig Dr. Pepper is America's third largest soft drink maker and is gaining on the competition. In fact, Dr. Pepper grew its dollar share by 9% from 2003 to 2021. That may not sound like much, but it's impressive compared to a 26% drop in the carbonated soft drink category overall. Starbucks is changing the rules of its rewards program. Starting February 13th, members will need to spend more to get free drinks and food. Right now, members earn a free cup of coffee or tea, baked good, or packaged snack when they have 50 stars or points, but soon it'll cost them 100 stars. A free latte, frappuccino, or hot breakfast item will cost 200 instead of 150. And salads, lunch boxes, and protein boxes are going from 200 to 300 stars. Members only earn, earn one star for every dollar they spend using a credit card. They earn two stars if they use a Starbucks card. Boo. <laughs> Boo hiss. I know. Time now, 548. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. As long as it has caffeine, I'm all for it. Whatever. Right. We'll make it work. Uh, unfortunately, things aren't working out here along 10 Advanced Jackson. Let's get a quick look at TransGuide. Uh, I was uh, talking to our friends over there. This looks like a stalled via bus. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of those spots where we tend to see a lot of traffic as well. I-10, we're inching closer to 6 a.m., meaning more folks are going to head out there in the next few minutes. So just watch out. Anytime you see those flashing lights, it does look like a text.hero truck is already on the scene. Uh, maybe about 
about looks like about three of them. So just again, watch out for those crews that are working to help the drivers out there. Uh, but overall, look at the map. We'll start here. You don't really see a lot of other issues, but there are some things that are lingering around. We're going to bring you into that stall vehicle, uh, stall via bus, I should say, right there at Vance Jackson Road. As you approach those westbound lanes, you will see those flashing lights. So remember, move over or slow down. Uh, have to take a drive down over here to US 90 westbound at Zaza Motor, where we did have a crash reported. It does look like uh, by the uh, corner of my eye that there are some flashing lights lights out there, so it could be that we are seeing the tail end of that. So hopefully a better update by uh, as soon as we approach a 6 a.m. hour. But as we get you back here, just remember anytime uh, you have any big road trips plan, check your vehicle because we know a lot of folks may be using the roads as a, a means of travel as opposed to air travel, you know? You know, yes. thank you, Stephen. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of folks love fireworks around here. Be extra careful. Oh, Don't forget, yeah. we're ending the second driest year on record. That's really a point. Uh, things are still dry. We've had some rain, and it's it's uh, more humid this morning. But we've still got to be really careful here uh, as uh, we get into New Year's Eve with the the fireworks. Uh, I want to show you the, the humidity as as we talk about how dry it's been. Yes, it is still very dry, despite the fact that. Humidity is increasing. When we talk about the dryness, it's the soil moisture. Everything there is extremely dry. But these dew points have been jumping up in a big way this morning. So it's sticky as you walk outside. 26 degree change with the dew point. It is up 26 degrees, up 30 degrees in New Braunfels. These are huge uh, upticks in humidity thanks to a southerly breeze now that has kicked in. And right now, here in San Antonio, 61. Dew point is at 59. East southeasterly winds at about three miles per hour. There is some patchy fog in spots. We're seeing that out around Rock Springs. And as you go down towards Catula and Carrizo Springs, but not a lot here, at least uh, in San Antonio, uh, around the city. 61 degrees at the airport, 60 Hondo, 56 Q Valley, 50 out in Del Rio. But you see the numbers as you go east, they get even warmer. It's 66 right now in New Braunfels, which is kind of hard to wrap your mind around considering we were in the teens less than a week ago at this time with the wind chill values near zero. So it is, uh, it's been a pretty big change here. 61 Pleasanton, 61 right now in Divine. Well, let's look at the forecast today. So some fog drizzle this morning. There's a small chance of that. There could be some wet roads. And as we get towards the afternoon, we'll start to see a few showers popping up. There could even be a thunderstorm well east of San Antonio. That opportunity is there, but it's a, it's a small window. And really, I don't know that we'll see much here in San Antonio. So we're talking 10 to 20% chance of rain here at best. As we get into tomorrow, the air will be a little bit drier, but there could be some very light showers that work their way through during the day as well. Some energy moves uh, to our north. A lot of clouds, and then by Saturday, the clouds clear out, and uh, we're going to see some pretty nice weather over the weekend. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast 60 at 7 o'clock, 61 at 8 a.m. Uh, by noontime, 66, 1 p.m., 68 degrees. If you're planning to do some tailgating for the Alamo Bowl, looks good here, here too. Temperatures will be in the 70s with cloudy skies, and again, maybe, maybe a shower. Uh, here's the setup trough out west. Pretty good looking storm system here over the Rockies. That's producing some snow around Denver. And then you've got a lot of weather out along the West Coast. This is where you're getting really strong winds, snow, rain. Uh, this is causing some problems. It may cause some travel delays today out West where, uh, you know, it's been mainly off to the East. Now it's the West Coast that has seen the issues. Although looking at the airport delays this morning, we are not seeing any delays at the major hubs. So that's good news for all those folks that are trying to get home. Boy, that's been a, a bad stretch, especially if you've been on Southwest. Uh, today, 20% chance of a shower generally east, 72, 70 on Friday. There's that small chance of rain. And then over the weekend, the ears even, the ears day. It's good. Temperatures will be in the 70s, upper 70s, in fact. Then we go uh, 70s next week with a small chance of rain on Monday. That'll be our next opportunity to get but uh, it's not looking great either. So this is this has been a dry year all the way around. And it looks like we'll start off 2023 fairly dry as well. Later in 2023, we'll get some rain. That's the hope. Okay. That's the hope. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. 553, 61 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have 81, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 2806, Fireball 3. All right. And as I look up the jackpot one more time, cash five numbers 520. 30, 35, Lotto, Texas, 8, 13, 16, 23, 27, 52. And Powerball's jackpot is $246 million.
next drawing is coming up in a couple days. Those numbers 26, 32, 38, 45, 56, Powerball 1, Power Play 2. Hey there, good morning. Coming up on GMA, a snowstorm bringing the Denver area to a standstill. A major interstate clogged with stranded cars for hours. We are there live with the latest. And that Southwest Airlines nightmare flying to new heights. Thousands of flights canceled this morning. How new storms could make things worse as the airline struggles to get planes back in the air and passengers home. Also, we are counting down to 2023. Ryan Seacrest is joining us live with a preview of the biggest party of the year that is all coming up right here on GMA. See you soon. And ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, frustration boiling over for homeowners out in Bandera County. We'll talk about what's taking so long to get their water turned back on. Plus, we're taking a look at the future of the workplace and how it'll evolve in the coming year. What experts believe companies will want from employees before a recession hits. And picking out a New Year's resolution can be a little tricky. What a psychologist is saying about finding the right one and more importantly, sticking with it. Checking Transguide right now. Still flashing lights. I-10 Vance Jackson area. Stephen Cavazos is on it. And we're talking about your New Year's weekend forecast coming up.